Good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us today for this Pharmacometrics program. We appreciate your spending part of your Friday morning with us. I'm Dr. Tina Makiu. I'm the Administrative Program Director for Pharmacometrics, as well as Senior Associate Dean and Professor in the College of Pharmacy. Dr. Ayapa Chattavadula is an expert in pharmacometrics. He's the individual who created the Pharmacometrics Certificate Program. He designed all the courses um, and instructs in all of them. Our program today will consist of three parts. First, we have a panel of uh, former students, graduates of the program, as well as current students. And they're gonna share insights with you about their experience with this program and how it's assisted them um, in their current positions or has uh, set the set stage for them um, to um, uh, garner positions as um, fellows in pharmacometrics programs. Dr. Chattavadula will be leading the panel or moderating the panel. The next part of the program, uh, Dr. Chattavadula will talk about a day in the life of a pharmacometrician and will give you examples of projects that pharmacometricians work on. And then finally, we will conclude with uh, question and answers. And Dr. Chattavadula, I'd like to turn it over to you now. Thank you, Dr. Matthew, for the nice introduction. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you panelists for uh, taking your time out to talk about the program. And it's a proud moment for all of us that uh, you finished the program and uh, we want to hear uh, very, very much your experiences and your career path going forward, which is very exciting. Um, so today, um, the, the agenda is we will start with brief introductions. And uh, Dr. Matthew already told uh, about me, I am Ayyappa Chaturvedula. I am currently associate professor at the College of Pharmacy, University of North Texas Health Science Center. I am also senior director, pharmacometrics consulting services in a, a pharmacometrics consulting firm called Pumas AI. Um, so I would like uh, each participant, uh, please uh, introduce yourself briefly, and then we'll go into question and answer uh, with, with the panel where I'll be moderating questions. Um, and each one of you will share your experiences followed by a case study and general question and answer session. Um, so for the audience, please uh, put your questions in the chat box. If you have any for the panelists or the faculty that we will be very happy to answer, or you can also reach out to us by email if you, if you want to reach afterwards. With that, um, let's start with introductions. Um, I will prompt the person for ease so let's start with Dr. Valerie Acuna. Good morning, everyone. My name is Valerie. I'm a recent graduate from UNT HSC and I'm an incoming fellow for USC and AMB. Thank you. Dr. Zuking Gao. Hi, good morning, uh, everyone. I'm Zuking Gao. I was um, graduated last year from this program, and I'm now working on the Alignum as a pharmacometrix. Thank you, Jyoti. Sheshwan Shin, Dr. Sheshwan Shin. Hello, good morning, everyone. My name is Sheshwan Shin, and I'm a current student, and now I'm working as a model and simulation scientist in, at Edosiat in Switzerland. Thank you. Dr. John Com. Good morning, everyone. I am Jean Tom Zia, and I'm a recent graduate for the University of North Texas Health Science Center, the System College of Pharmacy. And also, I am uh, I, I'm completing the certification program right now. And I'm an incoming fellow for UNC, the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, in conjunction with Noventra. Thank you. Dr. Goki Shule. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Goki, and thank you. 
I'm Dr. C. Um, I'm actually a recent graduate as well from the pharmacometrics program and also a recent graduate from the UNC HSA College of Pharmacy. I'll be an incoming fellow for UNC and Genetech. Thank you. Dr. Asama Tanardamonkon. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Asama Tanardamonkon. I am a pharmacometrician at Tewa Pharmaceutical. Thank you. Dr. Jichi Yu. Good morning, everyone. I'm currently a student. Uh, I work as a junior scientist in Humans AI. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, again, it's very exciting to uh, have you all on this panel. So I would like uh, um, you to share your experiences now uh, in a question and answer format. Um, I'd like to ask first um, about your personal story. Uh, clearly, you all have different uh, educational backgrounds. Some have PharmD, some have PhD. Some are already working in industry, probably in a preclinical, pre-K environment. Uh, some have uh, direct clinical pharmacology experience in the industry, but still you chose to do the program. I would like you to explain briefly your personal story with PMX in your career and how our HSC certificate helped uh, in shaping that personal story. So um, I'd like to start with uh, Dr. Valerie Acuna. Yes, of course. Um, so my story with pharmacometrics, or I guess like how I got started into it, um, it actually started with doing research with Dr. C over the summer. and. I think it just kind of worked out perfectly in the way that, um, unfortunately there was COVID, but it provided an opportunity for me to do research with him because it was completely online. I could do it from home and still I was like learning something and um, looking at possibly a further career. Um, through the research, I actually really loved pharmacometrics is a whole different side of pharmacy that I had not been exposed to before. And I love the way that we can use it in clinical development and make decisions um, within like clinical trials. And so I saw the utilization of it very quickly. And luckily for me, the program started. And so I was able to transition from the research that I was doing with Dr. C into the program itself. And so completing the program, um, I was during my third year, so I still had a little bit of time to determine whether or not I wanted to make that a long-term career goal, but I think the program or certificate program itself really just strengthened my knowledge and me wanting to continue, and so during my fourth year of pharmacy school, that's when I went ahead and started to apply for fellowships, and for me, I wanted to specifically like use these skills that I had been learning and for a pharmacist, um, one of the positions that you can get into is clinical pharmacology. And so um, I started looking at fellowship programs specifically within clinical pharmacology. And then I think this certificate program really just helped me be able to speak on my experiences, my knowledge, and really helped me um, get my fellowship position now. And so really excited to start that and continue my career within clinical pharmacology using these skills from the pharmacometrics. Thank you very much, Dr. Kenya. That's very exciting uh, to see um, all your progression in the program and ending up in, in the fellowship. Uh, congratulations again. Um, so I'd like to hear from Dr. Jushin Gao. Yeah, hi, I, I was graduated. Um, I was joined the UNC HSC uh, from Cometrix program after I graduated from PhD. Uh, in Texas Southern University, I was working on PK and PD preclinical during my PhD, and I had um, got in touch with um, from matrix area at the end of my PhD, and I was found that is very interesting. However, at that time, I only know the fundamental of PK and PD. I don't know nothing. I, I know nothing about Norman and R. From this program, I was um, have chance to getting into how what, what's the process of the pharmacometrics, what's the difference between like clinical pharmacology and pharmacometrics and uh, preclinical study. 
those are um, there are more modeling work and there are more, uh, there are more coding work for pharmacometrician. Uh, that's a major difference between the like DMPK or preclinical with um, CPPM. So um, then uh, from after I graduate from this program, I was applying to find another job to uh, from pharmacometrician. Then I think with a big help with this program and I got a job as a scientist for from pharmacometrician and getting into um, officially getting into work on it. And um, I think most, uh, most uh, um, helpful part is I am gonna knowing R code and Norman code from this program and getting, that's, um, that's a major reason I can get into the industry level. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gao. Uh, I, I think you, you, you nailed the point that uh, the additional skill set that is required for a pharmacometrician uh, in addition to PK knowledge um, uh, is what you got from the program that made your career. I still remember your call on a Friday evening uh, with excitement uh, that you got into Anlailam. So congratulations again. I'm Thank glad you. to see you again here. Um, I'd like to next ask uh, Dr. Sheshwan Shin. Yes. So I conduct my PhD in clinical pharmacology at the University of Cologne in Germany. And I was focused in in vivo, in vitro DDIs. So during my PhD, I already had uh, gained some PK modeling experience already. However, I would like to learn it like more sy uh, systematically. So especially the statistic uh, background behind the PKPD modeling. So actually I joined the program in 2020. And with this program, I really stress for uh, my statistic knowledge and also to learn like several different PKPD modeling strategies in very, very short periods. And I think it is very high, uh, it's very efficient. And after my first semester of these programs, I successfully received an offer and to join the IDOCIA and work as pharmacometricians in clinical pharmacology. Thank you, Dr. Shin. Uh... And, and uh, um, I really appreciate you joining uh, our uh, ad hoc calls from Germany at late night to even say hi sometimes. Uh, but I'm very glad to see um, your transitioning and, and uh, from a graduate school into pharmacometrics position. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to go next to uh, Dr. John, John Combe, Nazia. Yes, thank you, Dr. C. So my history with PMX is very long. I started in my P2 year when I was completing my PKPD class, the class that is required for to graduate from PharmD for the PharmD program. We were talking about non compartmental analysis, and that same day, I after the class, I went to see Dr. C, and Dr. C told me if I'm very interested in everything that we are doing in the class, I can come and uh, conduct research with him. That hard that summer, the summer of that following year before I start my P3 year, I conducted a research with Dr. C. After I completed that research, I was more interested and then the pharmacometric program was just opening up and I say, okay, even though I cannot take all the classes to meet the requirement for the pharmacometric program, I will just take one class as, at a time. And that's how I started. I took one class at a time. Right now I'm still completing the last, the last course to, to meet the requirement for this education program. But that helped me a lot going to my fellowship program because when we go to fellowship, one thing that we need to take into account is that we need to be able to answer the questions. We need to be able to speak about what we want to do. We need to be able to frame what we want. We need to be able to use the correct vocabulary. For instance, when we talk about PKPD, we need to be able to talk about parameters and even analyze those parameters. We need to talk about like, what is like fitting a model? What is like modeling? What is like, what is the difference between simulation? 
we need to be able to talk about like dif some different program and how we analyze the parameter that we get from those from the when we uh, fit those model when we have those uh, when we get those results and uh, when we see the trend in the parameter we need to be able to talk about those when we go to fellowship program all the time you have a presentation that you have to make and that presentation need to be to be you need to talk about your experience you need to talk about like pkpd through your presentation if I was not taking these classes, I will, I will not be able to build my presentation because I built my presentation from scratch. I was not, I will not be able to talk about PKPD. I will not be able to talk about a language. I will not be able to talk about, to even understand the vocabulary. So that program helped me because I was challenged I was uh, going to just going to. Uh, I went to so many interviews, and I can say that just because I was able to each time talk about what I was doing into the program and also is explain what I was doing, I got the fellowship. Thank you. That's that's very. Um clear uh, that you explain your your journey from PharmD PK class, which is the stepping stone for pharmacometrics. And I, I really uh, see how you progressed in the program. Um, and you make a point very clear that um, fellowship, especially for PharmDs that are aspiring clinical pharmacology uh, careers, uh, they need more knowledge and skills to present at the interviews and talk to the people that you convince them that you have the knowledge and skill set and program the cases in the program are pretty much what you are going to do in in real work actually speaking so uh, that that really nice that you used those uh, information and presentations that we generally do in class uh, to get into uh, cracking interviews thank you dr jane ko that's very informative uh, next, I'd like to go to Dr. Goki Shule. Okay. Yeah, so with memes, prior to the certificate course, I wasn't actually very familiar with pharmacometrics. Um, the only experience I had was um, with the, the PharmD on um, pharmacokinetics course. But prior to applying for the certificate course, I had an interest in pharmaco, um, pharmaceutical industry as well as clinical development. So through the course, I was able to learn more of like the quantitative tools that's using like drug development, um, understanding different PK and PD uh, analysis techniques, as well as the statistical knowledge used in pharmacometrics. So that made me be comfortable with using the software. Uh, I think within the program, we mostly use R, but there's other programs as well that's used um, within pharmacometrics. And over my IP rotation, I actually did a research reductancy, which helps me further my knowledge uh, within um, pharmacometrics. Overall, the certificate program gave me like a foundational skills and experience in pharmacometrics, in addition, helping me obtain my fellowship program. So my fellowship is gonna be based on PKP, the modeling um, with um, UNC and Genetech. So I had a desire to further my education from the information or from the knowledge I gained from this uh, certificate course. Um, that really helped me a lot during my interview too. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shule. That's, uh, that's very important. You mentioned the purpose of the program is actually not to train in software codes because the fundamental knowledge base is going to be very important for you to apply right tools. So even though you, as you mentioned, the software programs, we are using R and non mem but when you enter a industry um, that may be using a slightly different tool because you have Phoenix, you have uh, many other Pumas, et cetera. But fundamentally, if you know what is population pharmacokinetics, what is pharmacometrics modeling, it's easy to adapt. And that knowledge base is what foundational science that we are trying to give in terms of PKPD statistics, tools and techniques in case studies. So uh, I, I'm glad that you, you really understood that. And also the point uh, coming out clearly is the program caters to different levels. Um, some some uh, may get into fellowships that they further their knowledge to get research 
skills that they are not there in the general form day curriculum but people who already have reached skills such as uh, phd's uh, on the panel they are getting these additional quantitative skills that are moving into uh, pharmacometrics positions already so so it, it's very uh, satisfying to see these outcomes because that's the purpose we created this program to uh, cater uh, farm day students and researchers who wants to uh, strengthen their quantitative skills thank you for sharing that um next uh, dr sama turn on I, um, okay so um i have a pharmacy degree i work as a pharmacist before and i became interested in pharmacometric after i i listened to my sister rehearse her presentation on pharmacometric pharmacokinetic research so i remember she tried to explain the research she work for uh, for a couple of times, including develop a population pharmacokinetic modeling and physiological based modeling. So I found that the research was very interesting because you need the knowledge in diverse fields such as programming, mathematics, biology, and chemistry. So I went back to, to do training with Dr. Chadubadula in pharmacometric. At the same time, I also took the um, pharmacometric courses now I am working in the in a pharmacometric group. I found that the courses are useful. The courses in certificate lay the basic knowledge that you need to know to work in this field. For example, you um, once you finish the course, you I I can able to develop my own model and doing the simulation. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Tana. That that's very helpful. Um, and, and you actually an example that um, once you made your mind to go into research career, before that you're working as a pharmacist, that, but you came back and did a fellowship and certificate program to turn your career into more research career. So I really appreciate your, um, your perseverance in the program and, and uh, I'm glad to see you're doing very good uh, in the industry. So, um, next one, I'd like to go Dr. Jichi Gao, uh, sorry, Jichi Yui. So uh, as a PharmD, I first got my exposure to pharmacometrics when I was in clinical in my P4 rotations. So I was uh, working with the infectious disease team in a rotation where my hospital actually used a uh, biosome PK model based program to monitor the uh, vancomycin exposure. It's super cool, but at that time, because Oh, uh, as a PharmD, you don't uh, you only have the basic P uh, PKPT knowledge, so I don't quite understand. But it's super fun and cool. And then I got um several chances in my first job, which is a role in the uh, clean farm, traditional clean farm, to see population PK and PK uh, PBPK models. So I was amazed by what it can do, and I feel the need to understand pharmacometrics for my career. So I decided uh, to do the certificate. So this certificate helps me understand the theory underlying the modeling world as well as uh, a lot of like hands-on experience in R in uh, num nine to get practice and uh, help me finally transit, uh, transit from a traditional clean fund role to a functional metrics role. Thank you, Jichi, uh, that, that's very, um, good to see you found a program and uh, you learned skills to uh, get into quantitative uh, aspects of pharmacology, that is pharmacometrics. And I'm also excited that uh, we are working together in Pumas. So uh, I'm happy to see that. Um, so I think uh, it's great uh, to see uh, your experiences and thank you for, um, for, for telling uh, your story with us. And also some of you mentioned uh, Dr. C uh, and, and that is uh, my students call me with affection, Dr. C. So um, thank you all for, for the great hard work. Actually, in fact, uh, uh, it's your hard work that, that put you there. Uh, and we are glad that at UNT we, we could provide you additional skills and knowledge to reach those fellowships and also all the students uh, to see uh, achieve their uh, career goals into pharmacometrics. So with that, uh, let's move on to the next question. The next questions, few questions are a little bit general. So 
I, I don't have to go one by one, but uh, these are some of the concerns always we hear, uh, especially from not a very quantitative background uh, people such as PharmD is not highly quantitative too, or clinicians, MDs and um, biological uh, sciences based PhDs. So we want you to comment um, in general to enter the program and learn pharmacometrics based on your experience. Do we need a lot of computer knowledge before you enter the program and learn pharmacometrics? I would like you to uh, just go and I'll, I'll um, go as you would like to comment because not everyone uh, needs to say it, but uh, I would like you to chime in and uh, take the discussion on this. I can go first for this question. Please. Yes. So the answer is no. We don't need to know a lot of computer knowledge to learn pharmacometric. And I am one example. I don't remember working with Dr. C and most of the time he went to tell me, oh, Jan, if you have any concern, just uh, uh, send me a message and then I'm going to uh, make sure that I join you and I help you. But none of those were about like computer knowledge. We don't really need to know a lot about computer knowledge. And I don't know the level of computer knowledge that from the student come with when they start uh, pharmacy school. That knowledge is way above what we need to know in order to start the pharmacometric, uh, the pharmacometric certification program. I, I am below that that level and I'm able to complete that program. That means that everyone studying pharmacy school can really complete this program. Thank you, Jane. Uh, I think um, uh, knowing what we know is the most important step in learning better. So uh, I don't agree with you though that uh, you, are, you are any less than anybody else I've seen, uh, but you're just uh, being humble to say that I need to learn more. But your point is well taken that um, uh, the program actually gives you enough of opportunities to build those uh, basic computer skills that you need to know to be a pharmacometrician. In fact, pharmacometrics uh, deals with computer programming, but doesn't mean you're programming like a computer scientist. So um, that's the difference. So this is really a basic computer knowledge that we need to know for any type of jobs these days, in fact. Uh, not only pharmacometrics, because most of the business happens with computers um, in, in, uh, in, in general, uh, overall. Anybody else want to add to this um, that, that particularly um, uh, felt that they, they actually got better in their computer knowledge while doing the program? Yes, I could chime in on that. Um, so like Dr. C said, as well as John, you don't really need any specific um, computer skills to start the program like i'm not a very computer savvy person but over time you do gain the skills within the course for you to like you know get advanced so you know um different techniques to use in pharmacometrics but just starting itself you don't necessarily need to know anything specific yeah thank you that, i think that answers that question um uh, let me go to the next one uh, do i need to know prior computer programming skills to learn pharmacometrics? Okay, I can go. So, um, so you don't need to know computer programming to learn pharmacometry. In the courses, the code are provided for you. You just need to modify it. However, if you want to pursue your career as a pharmacometrician, it's better to learn how to do programming yourself. I wouldn't recommend those interested in um, this field to, le to learn basic Linux and software that can do data wrangling and create plot. At the same time, concepts are very important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tana. That is, that is very helpful. So the nature of the courses we built were we want to keep pharmacometrics to more, more on the knowledge base, interpretation of the results. And a lot of codes are given. Pretty much all the codes are given that are needed However, um, there, are, there is a progression that initially pretty much codes will work as they are given, but eventually they don't work as they are given, you may need to modify. And, and uh, 
that's where some learning happens. But the point is that we need to know what is happening in the code. And over a period of one year, you will start realizing, maybe not in the first course, but eventually you will. And the idea is you have all the information available so that in jobs, when you need to modify something, um, the, the quality of learn and apply is fundamental to pharmacometrics. So it's not that the code we gave you today is enough. You always have to continually, continuously update given the software updates and syntax changes. But the idea is, you know, the general framework of the program and you know how to adapt for the changes coming and solving the problems. So you, you should become more of a problem solvers rather than um, an information based. What you are given today is not useful probably after a year, but what you learn how to solve problems is always useful for your career. Um, anybody else want to add anything here before we move? Yeah, I can. I can chime in. I, I totally agree with Dr. Tana and uh, Dr. C. So uh, it will definitely help if you know our language a little bit, but you don't need to know programming before to learn uh, from metrics and you will gradually get to the level. And for my personal experience as a pharmacist by training, I'm not familiar with any computer language programming, um, but I can manage it with like the instructors, uh, instructions by professors, the examples, the hands-on um, practice, as well as like pro problem solving using uh, Google, GitHub, and uh, all the resources online. So, uh, and also your uh, student fellow, they are very open and uh, very, very helpful. We have a very good warm uh, atmosphere here and environment, so um, yeah. Thank you, that, that's very helpful. Actually, we encourage, uh students to uh, work together and all the assignments in the program are um, are about teamwork. So there is nothing like you cannot stop talking to others. Sharing codes is encouraged because that's how the jobs are. Nobody is going to test you on whether you know how to write a code, but rather you actually answer a question that is important for clinical pharmacology. So code is never a problem for pharmacometrics. You can take this, uh, whoever is aspiring for pharmacometrics. It's all about the interpretation, application of the right model at the right time. So um, I think that answers this question and let's move on to uh, an important one that uh, some of you probably will see in future, but is the material learned in the courses relevant and useful for your current and future roles? Maybe we'll start with uh, people already in industry first um, to to see uh, what they think. Um, Ashishwan, uh, Zuking, and Asama, uh, I would like you to take first uh, to see how it is helping the the materials from the courses. Yeah, I can start. So I think definitely in it's the material we learned in this course is really relevant. So in this course, in this program, you'll learn like the whole package of PK. PK PD or PKPD modeling. And I think this is very hardly to achieve by only doing two to three projects. And furthermore, you also learn to also to learn a bit about like the concentration QT model. And so QT is stand for QT interval. And I think this is also a very important assessment to investigate the drug uh, if effect on the QC interval prolongation in the new drug development. And um, in our department, so we work from phase one to phase three clinical data. So including like predicting the dose regimens for the next uh, clinical trial, predicting the efficacy for different formulation, or evaluate the PKPD profile for the space, uh, spatial population like the renal or hepatic impairment subjects, or the pediatric populations. And we also work with the, um, we also, also need to work uh, for the new drug uh, submissions. And also one very important things in our department also to evaluate the drug effect on the uh, ECG parameters. So I think um, this is really, it's helped me for every, the, my daily work. 
And it's hard, very hard really to explain how to describe it, but I can give you one example of what I have. So um, my first project at the industry was to build a PKPD model. So based on the clinical data and in my second week, and this is actually my first PKPD model with the real data. And I know that time I only have like one week to work on this model, and then I need to present the result already to the clinical team. But uh, with the knowledge which I learned before, I know there are different PKPD models which I can use, so I did not really feel very stressful, and I really uh, finish everything on time. So they are always satisfied. So I think this uh, course just, you learn everything and it's just helping for in the background for your work every day. That's excellent example. Thank you. Thank um, you. Anybody else? Zuking, um, Asama? Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, that's really helped me with my current job. So it's uh, maybe different company use different uh, platform, but my company is using R and Naman. So it's more relative to what we learned before. And um, yeah, definitely for my job, um, we also work in the clinical pharmacology and uh, pharmacometrician. And we kind of um, doing modeling from uh, collaborate with the MPK group for, um, preclinical data and until to the phase three data. So for the, yeah, for my per first, uh, uh, when I first joined the company, they also let me to do a PK model, then PK PD model. Even though our company is working on siRNA right now, but what we learn is probably a small molecule and large molecule, uh, which is, um, the model is kind of different, but uh, I will say the PK part are exactly same from what we learned from this course. And also when they let me to do some model and do some R code, I kind of copy from what we learned at the beginning, then um, gradually learn how to build your own code because we need some modifications from, from the code. This is uh, very helpful to what I did right now. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Asama, you want to add anything? Yeah, so uh, for me, the material I learned in the courses are useful. So I, I use them every day for my job. And sometimes I went back to read the, the lecture. I also think that the code from the assignment are very useful. I reuse them for uh, some of the code for my current job. So basically like every um, project is different. So you need to learn how to modify and adapt it to, uh, to your own core. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's very important that uh, you, all the outgoing students carry your coursework with you, especially all the assignments that you do. And that is going to be your library for your career. You may be modifying, but that will be very helpful in the early stages of uh, your career. Uh, when you have to deliver things quickly, you can use all these codes right off the shelf. Um, so for the PharmDs who are getting into fellowships, I would like to maybe close off quickly on this question. Uh, I, I know you cannot predict your future role, but if you have any examples to share or, um, or how you felt while, you, while you're interviewing uh, using the materials that, that uh, you learn in the program. Yeah, so when I was applying for fellowships um, and going through the interview process, part of the interview process is presenting. And so um, I was able to actually pull some of the case studies that I worked on during uh, the pharmacometrics course and present those to the team. And so um, that was just really nice to have. That was something that impressed the interviewers as well. And um, I think just emphasizing that the pharmacometric certificate course gives you that fundamental knowledge and the tools and methods that we use in the course are going to be similar to our future role. The only difference is now we're applying it to a real life um, setting with real life data. And so, um, yeah, that's, I'm excited to keep using those methods and like um, actually continue that. Thank you. Goki, Jin, would like to add anything? 
Yes, I would like to add that uh, the certification program really gave me, in order to help for my presentation, gave me like the outline of my presentation. So going through those presentations that we do every single week, it was not, um, it was really uh, easy for me to build an outline from that presentation because when you are supposed to present, for your fellowship program, they don't give you any outline. They don't. They just say present about anything, uh, PKPD. And I chose a large molecule. I picked the island from everything that you teach us, Dr. C. And I remember that at that time, I also asked you a lot of questions about, uh, for instance, about like a, a nonlinear model, about linear model, because I wanted to make sure that if it, uh, I have a presentation that is complete. And also something that I learned also with you is that we cannot just uh, we cannot just stop with what we have. You need to look also into the future and see, okay, how the talk is working right now on the market and also how how it is those on the on the on the human right at this time, because most of the time when the drug get on the market, we have a dosing. We have like, we optimize dosing, but with time we can also optimize more dot dosing and it can differ from whatever dosing we got when the drug get on the market. So I was able to build something like that, starting with the future, the present, and then starting with the past, the present with the future, and that impressed a lot my presenter. And I do remember that after that presentation, I got a, I got email from two companies that wanted me to be into their programs. That's great, great. Thank you for sharing that. And and definitely you you I one thing to mention about you, uh, uh, John, is that you always try to uh, bridge between the pharmacist mindset to pharmacometrician. So it's it's really clinical pharmacy versus clinical pharmacology. Uh, they're very similar principle wise. One is applying in patient care, one is applying in drug development. Uh, but I think uh, as foundies, you have best of both worlds in a way uh, that you can switch back and forth to be very efficient uh, in your careers. Um, so with that, I think uh, we, we answered questions and maybe finally, uh, very quickly, Please, uh, any ad advice for incoming students? I think my piece of piece of advice would be if you're on, if you're still a little bit undecided on whether or not you want to take the course, I would just say to take it. You will never know if you really enjoy it until you actually experience it and start learning more about it. Um, and then, um, if you are already applying to the program, and I think it was mentioned earlier. Um, try and connect with the other students that are in the program with you. Talking with them through the assignments um, really what helped me and it helped me get even a better understanding from just listening to lectures as well. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, my advice is that you have to ask yourself what kind of env environment you want to work in and what, uh, what you are good at. Do you, you, do you want to be a pharmacist for refining medication all day? Do you like to read and um, doing coding and data analysis all day? I would recommend the incoming student to read the job description online and or talk to people who work in the career that you are interested in. If you, want, you, if you are interested in becoming a clinical pharmacologist or pharmacometrician, um, getting the pharmacometric certificate might be the right choice for you. Um, once you learn the basic concept, I would recommend doing the, an internship fellowship or postdoc before entering a real career. Thank you. Yes, my advice for incoming students is that they need to really know what they want to do. And if they want to be a modeler or they want to be a clinical pharmacologist, they, this class, the certification program will help them to maybe find a job straight after pharmacy school or get into a fellowship program. And the reason why I say this is help, this is going to help to find a job after pharmacy school is that we have an example here. We have one example of our student 
of one student that graduated from the program that was a PhD and that completed the program and then got a job. And also to get a job into to get accepted into a fellowship program. In fellowship program, we have different fellowship program, but for this particular fellowship program concerning PKPD, we need really to know the skill. We need to be able to talk the language. And at the same time, you are competing with student, with PhD student. Even though you're a farm D student, you are competing with PhD student. So this is the program that we set you apart. And we let your interviewer to know that this is really your passion. This is what you really want to do in the future. Thanks. That, that's very important. Um, I think uh, pharmacometrics in general is is a very multidisciplinary uh, that we have PhDs, PhDs, MDs. Um, in fact, actually, uh, chemical engineering, uh, mathematicians, statisticians, we all have to converge into one place of clinical pharmacology. And that's where all these skills, one has a strength in one, another has some other. But end of the day, to get pharmacometrics job, we need to get to that uh, convergence and hopefully uh, our goal is to bring this coursework to get that convergence. And again, this will set you for foundations and there is always continuous learning and growing in the field as you see. And that happens at any level, in fact, not even entry level, but even senior levels, we are continuously learning uh, and applying in drug development because it's a very dynamic, uh, ever evolving field. Um, so I think uh, that's great advice. Um, I would like to now uh, move on to the next uh, thing, a brief case study that I would like to talk about. And we'll come back to general questions uh, after that. Thank you all for sharing uh, and, and uh, encouraging words on the program. And uh, here is a simple example I'm showing on a daily basis. We work in a pharmacometrician's life uh, as a recent case study um, um, that I worked on. And also this is a very similar one we teach in the one of the courses, last courses in the program, how to convert weight-based dosing to flat dose, uh, flat dose scenario. So in drug development, when you do clinical trials to come up with a dose, you may be starting with a milligram per kilogram based dose. But for your final commercial strategy, you may want to move into flat dose because you don't want to have a uh, uh, milligram per kilogram dose. So how do we do that using pharmacometrics? Because pharmacometrics is fundamental in making such decisions of dose. And this is a scenario that I'm going to talk about. So here is a scenario where the drug is developed for, is being developed for a multiple oncology indications uh, is administered as IV infusion. So the, for the treatment, someone has to go to the clinic to get uh, infusions. And the company had done already two studies, phase one study uh, at a very different uh, doses to ca calculate the PK curves. 0.1 to 20 milligram per kilogram every two weeks or four weeks given at different dose level combinations. And a phase two study is done in patients at 20 milligram per kilogram every Q3 weeks, uh, that is every three weeks given as IV infusion. After doing this study, they showed the uh, signal of the drug is working very well. Few patients have uh, complete responses. Some, ha some have partial responses in, in NSCLC and other indications. And now the company wants actually to uh, go for registration with a flat dose because of pa better patient experience and reduce clinic visit times, uh, better compliance. So now the company wants to determine what would be the flat dose given their clinical doses are studied in milligram per kilogram. How do we apply uh, modeling and simulation for their future phase three study that can be used for registering the drug and get approval. So obviously, the pharmacometrics is done in highly regulated environment. So whatever you're learning in the course are the skills and knowledge. But when you do it on the industry side, you have an additional component of 
audit trails and process is added, which you cannot teach in courses, but you will learn on job. So obviously all the work that we do will go into regulatory dossiers and end up in rug labeling or internal clinical protocol development and IRB reviews, et cetera. So it's highly regulated environment. So in this case, our approach was taking the phase one, phase two data, you build a model of population PK where we include body weight as a covariate on pharmacokinetic parameters. That is modeling effort. Once you have that model for the drug, we can use virtual population and simulate a clinical trial to compare in the same formulation, weight-based dosing versus flat dose, what are the exposures? In a way, by using the model, you are virtually conducting a clinical trial to make your determination which flat dose gives you a similar exposure of drug as weight-based dosing. So the fundamental assumption in pharmacology is concentrations at the site of action are giving rise to pharmacological response. Giving an equivalent exposure means similar safety and efficacy profile. That is the assumption. In addition to this, we need to show based on current data, what is the exposure response profile? That is, are we seeing any increased safety events with increased exposure? So together we can justify a flat dose given the weight-based dosing and go forward to make a determination. What it takes, you get the data from clinical trials, looks like uh, this in the graph where concentration versus time data is given. Then you build a model, compartmental models that are used in pharmacokinetics. Here it is a one compartment model. To come up with the equations and parameters you need to do a lot of modeling required skills. That's what you're going to learn in the program. And once you have the model, you create a virtual population of thousands of individuals with relevant body weights seen in the patient population. You can use the model to simulate their exposures given the flat dose and the weight-based dosing and compare the maximum concentrations, minimum concentrations happening at steady state. So if they are similar between flat dose and weight-based dosing, you are reasonably good to say that my flat dose gives the same uh, response as weight-based dosing. So the results are shown here. The red boxes are the trough concentration, that is the minimum point in the PK curve, and the blue boxes are coming out of the flat dose. So the red boxes are weight-based dosing, blue boxes are flat dose. And we calculate these percentile distributions of these parameters at different body weight bins to make sure that lower body weight and upper body weight groups are also, all the different weight groups are behaving similarly for flat dose and weight-based dosing. But you learn more in the course, I can't go into details, but the problem you see is inevitably for such conversions, lower body weight groups and upper body weight groups will always differ in their exposure. You see the boxes are not as matching as the, the other body distributions. That's because lower body weight group gets a lower absolute dose if you give it by a milligram per kilogram. Whereas upper body weight group get less milligram per kilogram absolute dose. That is how it is going to be. But the point is, whether these differences, especially the peak concentration being higher in the lower body weight groups with the flat dose, would it cause any safety signal? That is also going to be a concern. That we will bridge using exposure safety analysis. I'm sorry for the, um, the not clarity in this plot, but what this is showing is we correlated CMAX to grade three adverse events seen in the phase one and phase two studies to show that as the concentration Cmax increases in people, we really don't see increase in probability of adverse events. So this further information, this whole information will help us drive a decision of a flat dose and also convincing regulators that our flat dose will not change the safety and efficacy profile of the drug. So this is the kind of projects we work on. 
what are the core skills and knowledge required for doing such things? As our students and the panel were saying that it requires knowledge base of PK, PD, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, statistics, and software skills to do all those simulations, modeling, R, non-MIM, and other softwares like Pumas, et cetera. And also understanding of role of clinical pharmacology in drug development. So our certificate program is essentially building all these three into coursework of five independent courses. The PKPD and statistics knowledge are given in fall with two courses, quantitative aspects of drug action and statistics. And spring course clinical pharmacology and drug development puts that understanding of role of clinical pharmacology in drug development. And two techniques courses will give you a lot of case studies that you will see in your job uh, that are required to be done with R and non-MEM on a weekly basis. So that is uh, what I wanted to show and uh, applications are running right now and deadline is July 1st. With that, I would like to uh, take, we have two more minutes. So quickly, uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Ms. Krista Roberts, if you have any further questions that we can uh, answer. Yes, Dr. C, we had a few additional questions. One I just put in the chat. Um, are the credits considered, when you take the PMX uh, certificate, are the credits considered for master's programs in the future? Um, we currently do not have a master's program and we do not have plans to make a master's program because our program is designed to give foundational science uh, skills and knowledge um, that are necessary for, for taking further. Um, into their careers. As you see the examples, um, this is very useful for um, very early level um, uh, students who are aspiring to get into fellowships and also some experienced professionals who already have uh, a, a related skill set that would um, bring them into pharmacometrics. And in fact, we don't believe uh, particularly a degree would get a job, but the knowledge and skills and certificate program is designed for that matter. So. If another program of masters in another university consider these courses or not is something to check with the other university, but we currently do not have a master's program that you can transfer these credits into. Okay, and this, this question is more for the panelists. Um, what were the most challenging parts of the courses uh, and what course was the toughest? Panelists, would you like to? Take that one, anyone? Which of the courses the most challenging and what is the toughest one of all five? Anyone from the panel that is for the students? The question is for the students. So who have gone through the program, which of the five courses is the toughest you felt? I want to say it was the two courses that were in the fall, the quantitative aspects of drug action and then the statistics. Um, and that was just because it was starting the course and kind of tackling a learning curve of using a program now to like model the P different PKPD models. And so initially, I think it was um, a little bit more challenging. I, I wouldn't ever say like it was impossible because Dr. C was always there to help if um, I d was struggling or anything like that, um, but out of the other one, other five or other three, sorry, um, I I think those are the two most challenging. Okay, that, that's a fair point. I think uh, there is element of getting used to the science, so always first time is difficult, and also uh, the farmers who are already doing their entire coursework in the farm day curriculum have to be careful on choosing the workload. As uh, John uh, Combe mentioned, she went for one course at a time. That's fine. It's not that you have to take uh, all at once and, and uh, that becomes a capacity issue. Um, but, but anybody else you want to comment which one you felt more tough out of five courses? Uh, I would say the statistics one was for me. Um, I've always 
want to say I've struggled with statistics. I'm still improving on it. Um, and within the pharmacometrics course, statistics is a big part of it. Um, so just getting that foundational skills and building on top of it took a while for me. But towards the end of the uh, certificate course, I became more comfortable with it. So that's just one course I would say it's a bit challenging. Um, but overall, it's it's doable. Um, there's so much to gain from the courses, and you'll learn so much from all the courses. Thank you. And, and another question, Dr. C. Um, I know we're running out of time, but an, mm -hmm. another question was, uh, how many hours a week on average do you does a student need to dedicate for this program? So um, in general, a three credit hour course means you have a three hours class worth, worth of the class time. And then similar amount of hours you spend on homeworks and, um, and other assignments. So it depends on the person's savviness also with some of the tools and techniques in the early uh, uh, learning curve phase. So I would say uh, five to six hours is the maximum that you should set aside for each course per week. And then one other question, uh, is a non-MIM mm -hmm. license uh, provided or do they have to buy it? Um, all the software programs are provided, including non-MEM, on the servers that UNT HSC manages. No software programs are allowed to be downloaded on personal PCs. And we are very grateful for uh, ICON development solutions for providing uh, the academic licenses. And one of the requirements is that we do not let any licenses given to students. It is only available through the server and you will be learning and doing all your work on UNT servers and no installations are given to students. And you're free to anybody wants to buy a student license. I, I'm pretty sure they give a very uh, a reasonable price and you're free to buy your own. But for the course purposes, it is all within the uh, UNT server environment. Another question in the chat, any real projects as part of the course? Uh, we cannot do that because uh, of data security issues. Companies cannot let you do that. And not only here, but many places, unless it is a master's program with a thesis, some places like Maryland does uh, with proper research components to it. Our program is about building the foundational skills and uh, knowledge. So all the cases are highly relevant to what you actually come across in your jobs because these are done by practicing pharmacometricians working in industry uh, and seasoned ones. And we have a great advisory that you can check online uh, who is a faculty line. Uh, that means you get to work with simulated data, which seems like real, uh, but they are not real world data because of security issues, which it's not possible. Uh, for our program. Yes, and I want to add to that, that if you want real data, you can find articles where you can pull some of the real data and that's how I was able to complete my presentation. I used the Atlan that I got from the course and I used a pool of articles. I did like a, a systematic review article where I was able to pull data from those articles to complete my project. Thank you, that's, that's very helpful. And I also want to answer one of the questions that was asked, where to find opportunity for fellowship. And I just want to mention that uh, particularly us uh, as students, we, were, we are all member of the IPHO organization. And as a member, we were able to have the list of all the, all the fellowship, all the clinical pharmacology fellowship from the IPHO uh, website. Thank you. I think on the, I just want to add that the important organizations nationally, internationally uh, for pharmacometrics for clinical pharmacology community are American College of Clinical Pharmacology, American Society of Clinical Pharmacology and Pharmacometrics, American Conference on Pharmacometrics, Population Approach Group of Europe. These four you want to be a member of if you are thinking of a career, at least ACCP and ACPT for the US students. So these are 
some of the suggestions for networking and finding positions, uh, not only fellowships, but industry jobs. Thank you, everyone. We are at time. Um, if you have any additional questions, uh, please uh, email them to us. We are glad to assist you anyway. And um, uh, again, we thank you for spending part of your Friday morning with, morning with us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mary. Thank you all. Great seeing you.